Also, I really suggest you support Thundercry. He's a very small YouTuber, but his videos are so professional. Okay, I'll check it out. Let's see here. Mm, good thumbnails. All right, I got him in my history. I'll check him out. What's going on, guys? It's Thundercry back again. And yes, you heard that right. Waffle Time actually said my name in his stream. And I figured the best way to celebrate that was by beating Terraria using only Waffle's Iron. I don't want to drag this intro on for too long, so let's go. If you played Terraria before, you already know what I did first. Chopped trees, explored caves, and looted some surface chests. Since Waffle's Iron is a hard mode weapon, it'll make most of pre-hard mode an absolute breeze. So the basic slimes I'm encountering couldn't be further from being tough. Oh, and uh, I also got my first death after only, what, 15 minutes? After respawning, I made my way to the nearest desert and grabbed some cactus armor. Not the best, but it's better than wood. The thorn set bonus it gives off actually isn't bad either, so I can't complain. Once I donned my new protective equipment, I started to dig down. I was hoping to find some underground deads. What? I think this is my third time finding a pyramid in one of these challenges. Are they actually rare, or do they always spawn underground? Anyway, after I got my bearings, I ventured into it. I cracked open the golden chest and got the sandstorm in a bottle. A double jump this early? In no universe would I not take that. Deeper I went into the world, and I ended up where I wanted to be. The underground desert. With one chest, I got the ancient chisel. This would prove pretty useful all the way until Plantera. I decided I actually wanted to try building houses this time, so after building a small hut, I decorated the top with some fencing. To be honest, it looked cooler in my mind, but that doesn't mean it's going anywhere. Next on the list was exploring the world. It took a little bit, but I was able to reach the corruption, but having such a powerful weapon this early in the game makes the difficulty of this vile place pretty trivial. You know, I used to always use the magic mirror, as I'm assuming most of you watching use it too. But recently, I've just been using recall potions just because they have quicker use times. Yeah, they are limited, but you find them in so many chests in the world, it's pretty hard to run out. Coming back to base with 260 health, I explored more of my new world. Almost died. RNG was on my side though, and I was able to get the ancient shadow scale mail. Now, armed with waffle and armor, I made my way down the jungle. Hermes boots are always a good find. Those along with a double jump is all I pretty much need for the early game. I got home and actually made some jungle gear. Not the full set, just the boots and helmet. It's better than cactus, that's for sure. But once I equipped them, I challenged my first boss. The Eater of Worlds. With the Iron of Waffles, I swiftly took down the Eater. I was also lucky enough to get the mask. Nice. So I went home and crafted the rest of my missing shadow armor. And once that was done, I fought the Eye of Cthulhu. So once boss number two was downed, I started my elevator. I really hate doing it, but I want it done now, so I won't have to do it later. And then since I made it all the way down here, I began mining Hellstone and building a Hellbridge. Back above ground though, I made Molten Armor, drank a Gravitation Potion, and explored space. The dungeon was also located around this time. I figured that since I found the dungeon, I'd battle Skeletron. The waffles I shot out took the hands down pretty easily, and it took down the head even easier. There wasn't really anything I needed here, but I was able to get a Cobalt Shield. When I got it, I really didn't have any plans for it, but it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. I got pretty tired of waiting, so I crafted the Goblin Battle Standard, quickly took the Goblin Army out, and found the Goblin. I made my way back down to Hell and grabbed the last bit of ore I needed to make the Molten Pickaxe. Before I challenged the Wall of Flesh, I crafted some accessories together to get just a bit stronger. Once I felt ready, I took a leap down to Hell and began the fight. Oh, thank Waffle. I started getting super stressed near the end, but I was able to clutch it. But that's behind me now, and hard mode is ahead. And wouldn't you know it, the first night in hard mode was a blood moon. And a full moon. Great. So I spent this time hunting werewolves, hoping to get the moon charm. Unfortunately, I didn't get it tonight, but there will always be more full moons. Hard mode. New enemies. New items. It genuinely feels like a different game. Speaking of new items, I grabbed the items I needed for the obsidian shield and went mimic hunting. 
If you guys have seen my hidden effects of melee speed video, then you should know what my strategy will be. I already had the Feral Claws, I just needed the Titan Glove from Mimics. I was gonna go for the melee speed build, something I basically made fun of in that video. And for that, I would like to apologize. Without it, this challenge would probably be impossible. I spent about the next hour looking for Mimics and found a total of... Zero. To take my mind off of it, I started mining hard mode ores. As a result of that, I smithed some titanium armor. Using said armor, I went down and fought the Queen Bee. A big upgrade I could get was being able to craft flasks, which in turn you need the Witch Doctor for. And for those of you that don't know, flasks can add extra effects to melee weapons. Some notable ones are the Flask of Cursed Flames, Flask of Fire, and Flask of Poison. Just something to add extra damage to your melee weapons. The best part is that they also affect melee projectiles. So as I waited for the Witch Doctor to move in, I made an underground mob farm. I have a confession, I've, uh, I've never actually made one of these, so forgive me if it looks... bad. It wasn't automated, but it worked a bit. It was pretty disappointing though. I was hoping for it to work more, and ended up just wandering in the caves in search of mimics again. I did end up getting the glove in my farm though, so it wasn't totally useless. And what the uh, next hour of my life was spent trying to get an aglet. Yeah, you heard correctly. The accessory that pretty much everyone unequips first. I didn't get it in any of my surface chests, so I resorted to getting the skeleton merchant to sell it. And once the correct phase of the moon occurred, I went and found him. After I crafted the lightning boots, I went to work on building more houses. Yeah, I pretty much gave up on making good houses. I would rather, um, play the game. I even started farming for items I needed for the Ankh shield. But once it was night, I buffed up and took on the first mechanical boss, the Destroyer of Worlds. Luckily, I began working on a sky bridge earlier, so I was able to dodge most of its attacks. The probes were the real trouble here, though. Overall, it wasn't too bad, and I came out victorious, as always. I spent more time getting debuff accessories, fought through the solar eclipse, and spawned in the twins. My movement speed and projectiles worked wonders, and I was able to unalive these eyes. <laughs> it's, it's day 87 in this c c cold tundra. I just need the ice sk skates. But I ended up never even getting them. Come on, world gen, that's cold! Another night, another mechanical boss. Skeletron's metallic clone wasn't too difficult, and soon enough the jungle grew restless. Now that all the boss's souls were collected, I made my way up to the fire gauntlet. Next on the to-do list, let's see here... Spend two hours farming for the Nazar. Check! I also mined around and got eight life fruit, saw a Plantera bulb, and figured I'd see what I was up against. It was pretty clear that I was gonna die, but you never know if you can get an unexpected early win. I didn't, but uh, you never know. In my hard mode travels, I managed to get two turtle shells and a good amount of chlorophyte, so I made two pieces of turtle gear and planned to get the last piece soon. To change things up, I went digging around for the shimmer. Some of the smaller upgrades would be much appreciated and any bit of strength is strength I'd take. With my newfound power, I took on the Queen of Slimes. I started freaking out near the end, but you know, I'll just I'll just let you guys see what happened. D -d -d Double kill. Again, there isn't anything I even need from her. I just wanted to kill a boss. Speaking of bosses, I also broke the Destroyer and the Twins again. Turtle shell obtained. Turtle armor crafted. New armor. Old boss defeated. Sold. Made money. With more firepower in my grasp, I started clearing out a Plantera arena. I did some more digging, and once I thought it was good enough size, I buffed up and broke the bulb. Once again, Plantera was a pushover, and the fight was easily won. And then, with the temple key in hand, I located... well... the... the temple. What did you expect me to say? Once I got to the main chamber, I was actually pretty confident that I could beat Gollum without any preparation. I really need to stop blindly challenging Gollum. Because, once again, I failed the first try. I started fishing for Ebon Koi and Armored Cave Fish for better potions. I also took some time to farm some Bone Lees in the dungeon. Having a better dash and a dodge chance wouldn't hurt at all. So with that, I found a pretty open area and began the grind. I ended up getting the Black Belt but not the Tab Eye. Even though I didn't have them both, I decided to go back to the surface for a bit and make some Hallowed Houses. Mainly just for a way to get to the dungeon quicker if I died. And then once that was complete, I made my way back to the dungeon and grabbed the Tab Eye. I was also able to get some barbecue ribs from the dungeon, so with those, I also took some better potions and went to a rematch with Gollum. I did a couple last-minute preparations down there, but as soon as I was ready, I summoned the Protector of the Lizard People. 
I actually did get pretty low at some points, but at the end of the day, it was Gollum, and as long as I have potions, it's just a matter of time until I win. And when I did. With another boss down, I was one step closer to winning. I actually noticed that the beetle scale mail gave melee speed, something I've never noticed since I always go for the increased defense of the beetle shell. I only had a few more things to do before I took on the cultists, and one of them was getting the celestial shell. I was able to get the sunstone super easily from Gollum, so all I needed now was the moon charm. I failed at getting it earlier in hard mode, now it's time to finish what I started. Once the night was upon me, I spent no time dilly-dallying and hunted those furry abominations. Adventuring across the world, I wasn't finding any, which started to worry me as time was just slipping away. I eventually found a good spot near my base and slapped down a water candle. After some time, the moon charm and then the celestial shell were mine. I didn't want to reforge it because it literally cost a fortune to do so. Instead, I ended up just throwing it in the shimmer hoping to get a good natural reforge. I was getting all of my prefixes to violent for maximum melee speed. I never thought I'd be doing that, but, well, here we are. Once I got violent, I made my way over to the dungeon and challenged the cultist. This was probably one of the easier fights of the run, maybe just before the Eater of Worlds. And having the Flask of Cursed Flames didn't hurt at all. If anyone out there is sleeping on the flasks, just don't. The closest pillar that spawned was the Vortex, so I started chipping away at it. Until I died. I died too many times during these, so I'll just show all of them so you can experience just a fraction of the pain and frustration I did. This is it. The final battle. With all my buffs, I was stronger than I'd ever been before. So let me just show you how awesome this fight turned out. What? What? I literally lasted only a minute. Ugh, I honestly don't know how I'm gonna do this. I felt like so in shock after how little damage I did and how quickly I was taken down. I thought to myself, maybe it's my mobility. So I went to fight Duke Fishtron, hoping for his wings. Well, that was disappointing. After how the fight with Moon Lord went, I debated not even finishing this. Was it even possible? That was the strongest I could get. I actually thought about ending this video without beating the game. I had fragments from doing the pillars, so I made some spawners and decided to test around a bit. Try some strategies and see what works. I stayed close enough to hit the eyes reliably, and also close enough to where I could see the top eye charging its laser. If you didn't know, this top eye does a little sparkle animation whenever it was about to fire, something I actually noticed while recording this. So, every time I saw that, I'd either use a recall potion, or just ground myself and fly over him. I only took some spare basic buffs I had. Seeing how close I was, I became filled with confidence. Maybe this run isn't lost after all. So the last thing I did was fish for some prismite to get some life force potions. Once I stocked my potions back up, I summoned Moonlord. I won't show the full fight since it took 18 minutes, but if you want to see the full fight, I'll leave a link to it in the description. Without further ado, here is the final fight of this challenge.
and as is tradition in these challenge videos, I built a little victory hall to celebrate. I decided to go for a waffle-like design, for obvious reasons. I used sandstone bricks since they kind of look like the texture of waffles. Kind of, maybe? Uh, seemed right in the moment. I grabbed all my armor and accessories and began placing them in. I also rigged up a teleporter system so you can visit it as soon as you spawn in. So with it all complete, here it is. The Waffles Iron Only Victory Hall. And with that, this challenge is officially over. I really hope you all enjoyed. It took me a while to make this, but it was really fun doing it. I've only ever used Waffles Iron in my Melee Speed video, but once I saw Waffle Time say my name in his stream, I instantly knew I had to make this video. So thank you, Waffle Time. I also want to thank Terrell Jones for suggesting me to Waffle Time to begin with. So huge shout out to you, Terrell. Thank you. Again, I hope you all enjoyed the video, and I can't wait to see you all next time. Peace.